welcome back to the channel. Um, so today is going to be fuel system day for the Camaro. I'm going to be swapping out the fuel pump as well as running through my whole fuel system before I actually change it. Um, just to show you guys, tunnel. Oh uh, yeah, and show you guys exactly how I did it when I actually swapped my car. I also have to put in a boost reference fuel pressure regulator to up the fuel pressure when it is under boost. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be running a return. In addition to that, I also got my fans in from eBay. So I think I'm going to start by installing those, see how the shroud fits. Then I'll run you through my current fuel system and we will drop the tank. But before I do that, I have a little too much gas in the tank. So we're going to have to do something about that. Oh yeah, that did it. All right, with the gas tank mostly empty, we are ready to get to work. Uh, first thing I'm going to start off with is the new fan shroud. So let's get these LS1 fans out of here and we'll see how the new ones fit. All right, so here are the two fans side by side. Um, you can see what I was talking about with the LS fans, how I kind of had to trim this down just to get them to clear the steering box. And I'm pretty sure that's affecting the cooling um, just because they're so close. There's not really enough room to pull air from like the top and the bottom. Whereas these, uh, you have that space there which is going to allow um, more of a suction effect and pull air from the entire radiator instead of just in front of where the fans are. All right, so they've dropped in pretty much no problem. They fit very nice and snug uh, right between the Summit radiator. If you have the stock third gen radiator, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the same just because uh, this is a direct fit from Summit for third gens, but you can see they fit in there nice and snug um, tabs line up right at the top here uh, in this little lip here on the radiator so now i'm just going to grab the drill um, put a couple of holes in this a couple machine screws and that's going to secure them in place but as far as fitment uh, so far very good you can see now i have a lot more room between the steering box and the fan but i'm going to grab the drill put a couple of holes wire them in then we'll start the car up and see how they cool all right so i just finished putting the fans in and uh, for now, I just went and put the, I slid the little terminals on the fans into the uh, original LS1 connectors. I'm probably gonna cut those connectors off and just put um, like one of these on here and then wrap them up with a heat shrink. But I started the car up, let it warm up just to test them out. And they're coming out like they're supposed to. Uh, they are pulling air, I have them wired correctly, but I'm noticing the temperature is going up at idle. Let me show you quick. Now, I don't know exactly what my tuner has the fan set to. Um, I went up to 203 right now just because I had the motor off. But at idle, it's sitting at like 198 and the temperature isn't dropping. Okay, now it's coming down. All right, we're at 198 and that's pretty much where it stays. It doesn't get any cooler than that. But if I go and rev it up, starts dropping. See 196, 194, and it drops a lot. Now I am currently running the stock ZL1 thermostat because I put the LSA radiator in it. I used to have a 160 thermostat in it. Um, the, the Camaro LS1 thermostat was compatible with that water pump. So I do plan on picking up a 160 thermostat for the LSA water pump. Uh, maybe that's gonna fix the issue. Maybe it's just not enough fan um, to pull it down at idle. Once I start revving it up, you know, the coolant's flowing through. It's cooling a little better. I'm really not sure. Let me know in the comments. You, you have an idea what this might be. I bled the system pretty well. I don't think it's an air pocket, but you can see we're getting back up to 198 over here. But if I rev it up, we start dropping again. So I do want to get this sorted out before I have the car, uh, before I have the blower on the car and I'm making more heat, run into more problems. It's not even that warm today. It's only about maybe 70 degrees out. I think I'm going to start with uh, picking up a 160 thermostat, put that in, see what it does from there. If it's still not cooling correctly, I might just go and pick up a better set of radiator fans. Being these are the uh, ones that came with the eBay shroud, they might not just be pulling enough air. Um, I'm not really sure. I just don't know why it would cool when I'm putting more load on the engine rather than when it's just idling. I mean, it really seems like a flow problem to me. So I'm gonna start with the thermostat and work my way from there. But by all means, any ideas you guys may have, please leave them in the comments below.
Okay, so we got the connector crimps on. This side's all wrapped up, tied away. This side just gotta wrap up and zip tie it to the rest of the harness here. I'm gonna finish this up, get the car in the air, and we'll start taking the tank out. All right, everything's back together. I got the intake in. I just wanna run through exactly what I did here. So pretty much to mount this up, I went and I got these little rubber washers. I put one underneath between the radiator and the shroud. Then I just used a self-tapping screw. Went through this top lip here of the radiator. Fans were all wired in. I zip tied all the wiring against the grill here. So everything's tight, looks good. All right, so the car's in the air. I'm just about ready to um, get working on the fuel pump. But first, I'm going to give you guys a tour of my current fuel system and how I hooked it up when I first did this LS swap. So I figure I'll start up here and work my way back. With the fast, I'm using a LS3 rail. Um, the truck rails do have a return, but when I first did the swap, I was using an LS6 intake with an LS1 rail. It's pretty much exactly how this is here. The inlet for the fuel is on the driver's side and you have this one port. There is not a return on the actual fuel rail itself. The way that I connected the rail to my hard line, I am using factory 3.8 steel line. My hard line comes up and then right here, I flared it. I just did a single flare and used one of these AN um, line nuts and sleeves. Now, being my line is a 3.8, I am using negative six AN size fittings. Put the sleeve on here, I put the nut on there, and then I did a single flare. That's how you're gonna connect your hard line to the AN fittings themselves. From there, I just used a negative six um, male to male 90 degree fitting. From there, it's screwing into the actual hose. Now to make this hose, it's really easy. This is negative six braided AN hose. I got it from Summit. I got all the fittings from Summit. Pretty much this part here unscrews, if you can see the sleeve here, this sleeve comes off. And then it's kind of like, um, the inside of this is like a barb fitting. So you'll slip the sleeve over this, you put the barb down inside the hose, and then you just reconnect this here. And as you tighten it, it clamps down on the line. You'll get to see this more in depth as I actually do the system because I have to make new hoses and stuff. So you'll see how I make them and exactly how it works. So coming off the rail, uh, we're going down to our hard line. You know how I flared it. Then pretty much the line just runs down under the car along the frame rail until we hit the next um, section of AN hose and that's over here by the back wheel. So a lot of guys have been asking me about how we did the fuel system, how the AN hoses work and what I'm using as a regulator. Now the simplest, cheapest way, if you're doing one of these swaps to do the fuel system is to use a C5 Corvette fuel filter. Here it is here, this is out of a regular C5 Corvette, completely stock. This has the return built into the filter and at the same time, it's also a regulator. So you have your return, you have your regulator and you have your filter all in one piece. Now you can see there, that's where my hard line comes down. And then same thing on this end, I have one of those negative six AN tube nut fittings, made the hose exact same way, comes along. And then on this end, I just went and got a negative six um, GM type of fitting. So that slips into the filter like a regular uh, GM fuel filter fitting. And then on this end, it's a negative six uh, threaded end that connects to the hose. Then onto the other side of the filter, for my actual return, I just used a regular rubber 5 16 hose and I connected it to the factory return coming off the tank and I clamped it down on the other end of the filter here. And this is fuel injection hose. Um, it's not gonna be as high pressure as the feed going to the rail. And then coming off of here, once again, I used a GM type of fitting see over here um, it's just slipping onto the other end of the hose instead of using this end of the filter is a female end so I had to get a male uh, type of AN quick connect fitting other end same deal except I'm using a female side to connect to here pretty much like the same connector I have on the fuel rail and then that goes to a 90 degree hose end exact same thing and once again the hard line coming off the tank is a negative 6 AN tube nut fitting that I single flared. Um, you don't have to flare this yourself. They do make like compression type of fittings. A lot of people use, they're very common. All you do is slip it, literally you cut the hard line wherever you want it, whatever length, you slip that compression piece on there and then you just tighten it down and it crimps onto the hose. You don't have to do any flaring, but it's easy enough to do. So I just went ahead and uh, did the flaring myself. And that's really it. There's nothing else to it. Then it's just wired up um, factory, how uh, the third gen wiring was as far as going into the body. You can see there, that's where the old connector was, where I was having problems last time that I bypassed and ran the wires up through there. Um, but coming off the pump, you know, the connector's the same, factory connector. I just tapped into it um, at the body here, and that's running to my uh, relay going to the PCM. And really, that's all there is to it. It's extremely simple to hook up the fuel system in these cars. Um, what I'm gonna be doing now, when I'm actually changing the pump, this is gonna get all ripped out. 
I'm gonna replace, I'm still running hard lines just because uh, I don't wanna run a braided line all the way up to the front of the car. I'm not doing that in this video. That's probably gonna come in the next video when I'm putting the blower on. Um, right now, I'm going to be changing the actual pump in the tank. And to do this, I really don't feel like dropping this tank. I've done it lots of times, but now taking a closer look, I remembered I gotta pull this um, whole pipe off coming off here just to get the fuel tank out. So I figured it's probably about time just to go ahead and cut a fuel door inside the car. It's gonna make it a lot easier to run the wires into. Um, I can just have put a grommet, have them coming right through the top. I'll be able to access all my fittings and the pump if I ever do have a problem with it. And it's just gonna be a lot easier than having to pull this tank out every time. Done right, it looks great, it's extremely functional. There's no problem with it. A lot of people kind of just go in there with some tin snips, cut it up and uh, you know, just do a hack job out of it. I'm gonna do this the right way. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it the right way. So I'm back here in the hatch area. I got the carpet out, I got the box marked out. Well, first of all, any of you guys wondering how I did the cage, um, just a little sneak peek here. I mounted the plates right over here and then welded them to the car and then welded the cage to that. That's for another video. Um, right now we're gonna be cutting the hole for the fuel pump. Now I went ahead and made this little template here. This I just copied off of thirdgen.org. There's a guy on there who did this mod and he has a lot of pictures of him cutting the hole and these are the exact measurements that he used. So I just went and copied them. Um, you're looking at an inch from uh, each one of these spots, an inch from this uh, indentation here, an inch from this side, an inch from that side, and an inch and a half I have for the back. If you are gonna do this to your car like I am, um, you are gonna wanna be smart about it. Now, I've had my gas tank out multiple times in the past. Um, I know my gas tank isn't leaking. As of right now, the tank is very low. There's not much fuel in it. I went under there, I checked all the lines. There aren't any leaks. I can't smell any gas. Um, if you have an original third gen, you never had the tank out, you just bought the car and you're looking to do an LS swap and you need to change the pump for any reason or get to the tank, just pull the tank out. It's really uh, the best thing to do, especially if you just got the car, you don't know the history. There could be like sludge, rust, like crap in the tank. You wanna take a look at that, inspect the lines at the top of the tank, make sure there's no rust, nothing like that. Um, you could have a leak up there that you don't know about. So you don't wanna go cutting a hole and throwing a bunch of sparks on top of your gas tank on a 30 year old car when you don't know the condition of the lines. I'm going to be using an angle grinder here, um, cutting it very, very shallow. You have a bit of space, maybe like an inch or so of space between the actual sheet metal and the tank. So you don't really have to worry about cutting through it, but definitely keep this blade shallow um, just to prevent from hitting any lines or anything that might be under there. But with that being said, I have my face shield I'm gonna be using. I have safety glasses and I also have my fire extinguisher right by my side, just in case something were to happen. Okay, so the hole is made and I regret nothing. Uh, look how perfect that is. Instant access to your pump. Um, only thing left to do now is gonna be, I gotta cut these guys off and I'm gonna put AN uh, fittings on there and then run braided hose down to the bottom. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and cut these guys off of here and we're gonna pull this pump out. All right, so I'm sitting in my hatch here. I got all the lines cut off, ended up just using some regular dikes here. Did a little twisting and prying, and then I just snipped each one off. Um, there's a lot of lines on the factory sender. This one over here is the, uh, the current fuel supply, and I'm pretty sure it's the factory uh, fuel supply for third gen. Um, the smaller one here is my current return, and then one of these is for EVAP, and then one's a vent. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be installing a 3 8 return line and I'm gonna, I'm still gonna be keeping the 3 8 um, supply. A lot of guys upgrade to a, um, a negative 10 or a negative eight. I'm just sticking with the negative uh, six. It's plenty for me. Um, there's guys running over 700 horsepower at the wheels on a 3 8 um, size fuel supply line. So I have absolutely no need to upgrade that at this time. 
Um, I'm just gonna keep that and the 3 8 vent over here I'm gonna use as a uh, return. So I'm gonna have a 3 8 supply, 3 8 return, and then um, these two here are just gonna be open and that'll be my vent. Also for the wires, if you remember one of my previous videos, I went and bypassed the factory connector here and drilled a hole and passed them through here. So all I did was cut them on the inside of the car where I put these temporary uh, crimps and then just pulled it right out through the top here. So I have plenty of slack on the sender and uh, the factory fuel pump wires. So right now I'm just gonna go grab a chisel, we'll knock this ring off and we'll pull the pump out. All right, so the pump's out. Um, I was having a little trouble getting it past the, um, the float for the gas gauge. So I just uh, kind of unclipped it from the pump and pulled it out first, and then I got the rest of the pump out. Then it was no problem. You can see inside of the tank, a few little flakes down there. It's probably just uh, crap that's in the gas. Um, but overall, the tank looks absolutely great. This is my original tank. I never swapped this out. So this is the original six cylinder tank that came with this car. Take a look in there. It's looking pretty damn good. So I will not be changing this tank. And here's our whole pump assembly removed. Uh, here's my current Walboro 255. And this is how I hooked it up when I did the swap. This was a new sender when I put it in. It's a uh, Spectra sender. I'll put a link to this down below too in case your gas gauge doesn't work and you want to replace the sender. Um, you can do that by picking this part up. But I think before I call it a day, I'm just gonna run into the car and see if I can pull the rest of these hard lines out. Okay, so I got all the remaining hard lines um, out between the tank and the body. And I just had to remove the two uh, tank strap bolts just to uh, drop the tank down a tiny little bit um, because the way these are routed, they go through this kind of rubber thing and this is sitting between the tank and the body. And there's really no way to just like pull them through, especially since they have all these bends. So you saw in the video, I kind of just pulled them out a little bit. Um, bent them, pulled, bent, and then they just slipped right out. Once I got one out, the rest came out no problem. But now taking a closer look at my old fuel feed here, you can see what I mean with these AN tube nuts and sleeves. So literally all I did was I took a brake line flaring tool and just did a single flare, just like that. First I put on the nut, then the sleeve. You wanna make sure you put on the sleeve the right way so that the lip is pointing up. And then once that's done, um, simple as that, you could connect an AN fitting to your factory hard lines. And really, in my opinion, this is the best way to go. You can use those compression fittings, they do work. It really takes no effort at all just to uh, put a little flare on the end of that thing. And then you'll have uh, this nice, secure, high pressure connection. Yeah, so I think that's gonna do it for today. I'm pretty tired. I made a lot of progress, got my hole cut, um, showed you guys how the fuel system's going, got the radiator fans in. Tomorrow, we're gonna come back and install that new wall bra. And just like that, it is day two of working on the fuel system. Now, as you just saw, I went ahead yesterday and did install a fuel door. I really wasn't planning on it, 
I kind of just uh, had a little extra time. I ran to Lowe's, picked this stuff up, put this together in maybe like under an hour. What I ended up doing was just getting a big piece of sheet metal. All I did was measure it out, pretty much just leave a little bit of space between these two grooves here. And then I went and got these hinges. I think I have the package here. That's the part number. And using these little hinges, I welded them to the car and then I placed the door on top of the other side of the hinge and welded them underneath. In order to get the height correct with this uh, gasket I put, I just cut another strip of sheet metal and pretty much welded the hinges to that, as you saw me just do in the time lapse. And then I just welded, uh, I drilled a couple holes in the actual plate that I made. Uh, tack welded it there, tack welded it there, then put a uh, one, two, three, just pretty much where the hinges are uh, to make sure that the hinges aren't going to pull up by uh, pressing down on this gasket. I use this, it was listed as like automotive, um, automotive and marine um, weather stripping. It's peel and stick. Put that around the hole and as you can see, that really cleans that up. I have a nice little access door if I ever need to get to the pump again. No more dropping the tank. And then to latch it closed, they didn't have anything in Lowe's or the hardware store uh, that I like to actually latch this. So I just used uh, two tech screws and washers and I just screw it down like that. This thing isn't gonna need to be open probably at all. I mean, the only time I have to get in there is if I have to change the pump or something again. Um, but for the most part, it's just gonna be hidden under the carpet. Plus I didn't wanna have like a bulky lash that's gonna be sticking up and be really noticeable. With the padding under the carpet, I don't think this is gonna stick out too much because once these are down, it kind of uh, presses the gasket. All right guys, so I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I ended up with a lot of footage in this one. I have almost 50 minutes of video. Um, and if I keep editing it, it's just gonna take me longer to get it out to you guys. So I figure I'll cut it off here and then upload the other part as a part two, where I am gonna cover how to uh, tap into your factory 3 d hard lines in order to adapt them for the AN fittings. Uh, so there's also a lot of good info in that. But I was able to get the door installed. Um, I showed you guys my current setup. So if you're looking to do an LS swap in your car, um, I hope I simplified the fuel system for you. I'm gonna link those um, negative six tube nut fittings and the sleeves uh, in the description, as well as the fuel pump that I'm gonna be using. But you're probably gonna wanna wait uh, for my next video to come out because I am gonna show you how to flare the lines and how to install those fittings um, so you can adapt the, um, the braided lines and hoses to your factory hard lines. It's just gonna be a lot easier for me to edit like a 20, 25 minute video and get it out to you guys instead of waiting like a week and a half for me to go through like a 45 minute video. As you've been noticing, a lot of my videos have been pretty long lately because there is a lot of info um, and stuff going on in this build. Probably another two to three videos are gonna be just doing the fuel system. Then I'm gonna be getting the blower on. I still have to do the whole cooling system for the blower, install the heat exchanger. I wanna move the fans. Um, then there's the meth kit. Uh, the actual installation of the blower, so I have a lot of content coming. So by splitting it up, you're going to get it faster. Link to my Instagram is going to be down below if you want to go check that out. Um, but as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.